All right. Come on, dogs. You can do it. Very good dog. Very good dog. Come on out there. Come on out of there, Charlie. No name. Very nice. All right. Welcome back to the bluegrass on this rainy and, and uncomfortably warm January day. Last week it was like 13 degrees, 14 degrees, and so you know I've got my heavyweight long underwear on and I am burning up because what is it today, cameraman? 53. It's 53, you know. I mean, listen, inappropriate choices in clothing can go either direction, right? Either you're not too warm, you're not warm enough, or you're too warm. So like, all of us make mistakes sometimes. Okay, so what we're doing here today. We're just going to take a quick walk around the pond and uh, do a little bit of a farm and water acclimation for some dogs. Come here, Luke. Luke, come here. I have Hoban, a little field bred Labrador Retriever. I have Charlie, an English Labrador Retriever. And I have Luke kind of smelling around over here in the field, uh, not paying much attention. That is a curly coated Retriever. And uh, so he's got a little bit of a late start in life in terms of socialization, socialization, impulse control, attention span, basic training, you know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, we're just kind of treating him like he's a puppy and starting from scratch. And you guys know what I like to do. Uh, I like to get out and do interesting things. I like to get moving and do interesting things and let uh, life be the greatest teacher. So that's what we're doing. Look over there and see how Luke is learning by doing. Cameraman, he's eating a bunch of stuff that I'm sure he's gonna throw up in my truck. But uh, that's okay. Hey, dogs! Come on, come on! So Luke is here for uh, like yeah, a few little problems here and there, but uh, supposedly. You know, and I'm not one to doubt when people tell me stuff, but supposedly Luke uh, has been biting people, you know. And so we're just kind of letting him pal around, and I'm putting him around a lot of people in a lot of different situations and cataloging the situations that cause him to be nervous uh, because it's not like he's chasing people down and attacking them, but he gets a little nervous sometimes, and he'll bark and kind of puff up or growl. And uh, so I just had somebody down at the kennel yesterday whose brother had a curly coat, uh, and they ended up having to uh, do something with it because it, it, that problem got pretty bad. It ended up biting a few people, you know. So we're going we're gonna to keep an eye on that. A lot of times, as a dog trainer, dog trainers like to pretend like, you know, they'll say, like in their marketing, they'll be like, any dog, uh, any time, any problem, or whatever. But look, guys, there's lots of kinds of dogs. And within those different kinds of dogs, there's lots of bloodlines. And there's, there's no way to be an expert on every bloodline of every type of dog. So always be a little bit skeptical of that, you know. Uh, if, you, if you have uh, kind of, a, you know, what we call, a, we call them Range Rover dogs, you know, kind of rare and uh, typically needing tons of maintenance. If you have a kind of a boutique breed, okay, you got to be careful about people giving you advice on training it, you know, especially if they don't take the time to put the dog in a lot of situations and really study it closely, okay? And when I'm talking about studying it closely, I'm talking about letting the dog get outside of your area of influence and really watching it, okay? I can take a dog and lock it up in a little room and the dynamic between me and that dog or me and that dog and other people is gonna be different than if the dog uh, is in a wide open space or in that room minus my presence because I've been around a lot of dogs and so I kinda know you know what to do and the dogs look at me and they kind of know you know that that guy has a calming influence on you so you have to be careful because just because somebody has a lot of experience with dogs and they can get your dog to do certain things um, when they're close it doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be able to transfer that skill set over to you or uh, properly socialize your dog in such a way that those behaviors aren't going to pop up somewhere in the future where you don't want them to pop up like you'll notice as i'm walking here I'm just kind of letting Luke, you know, kind of do what he wants. Now, at my kennel and in my pre-adventure area, Luke, uh, he never gets too far. But when I first let him out of the truck, you saw he kind of he started going a little ways away and smelling and kind of eating stuff. And, uh, you know, I don't, need to, I don't need to tell him to stop doing that. He just needs a chance to get used to being out here, to get used to all these different smells. 
right? And even though I started off this session in a relative motivational deficit, the environment was much more interesting than me. Uh, as Luke gets experience in this environment, then the newness will wear off and the novelty will wear off and he'll go back to thinking that I'm a cool guy and he'll come over here and see what I'm doing because I'm always, you know, doing fun stuff. I have a good credit rating with the dog. I always make sure that being with me leads to fun stuff. And notice how I'm not following Luke around too much. I'm kind of going off, doing my own thing. Got these labs with me. And what I'm hoping is that as I get farther away from Luke, uh, like it'll start to make him, you know, like, you know, think a couple of different things. Number one, uh, where Stoney and those other dogs going? They look like they're going to go do something interesting. But number two, I'm banking on the fact that Luke hasn't been in a lot of situations to develop the kind of confidence that allows him to just go off on his own. Very good dogs. Now notice what I'm not doing with the two Labrador Retriever puppies. I'm not saying anything to them, you know, because like I'm not trying to raise Labrador Retriever puppies that do what I tell them. I'm trying to raise Labrador Retriever puppies who know what to do based on uh, the environment and situational factors, okay? Now there's a blue heron. You guys that are familiar with my channel, you always see this guy. He's right up there. He'll probably get up and move here in a second. We'll see if Luke notices him. Now, as far as I know, Luke has never been in the water before, okay? But these curly coats, uh, they have a real, like, uh, like well-established reputation for love in the water. And that's one of the things I'm kind of interested today in. Uh, I'm gonna throw a retrieving item for no name and let him get out in the, in the water. And I'm gonna see just what Luke's natural reaction is to the water. Is he gonna jump in there and try to follow no name around? Is like he gonna go and look for the retrieving item himself? And what's he gonna do when this blue heron uh, flies away over here? And there he goes. <laughs> look, nobody even noticed. <laughs> Okay, all right, so I'm just going to kind of start tromping off through this water a little bit and see what these puppies think about it. Now we're going to stay where the water's not very deep at first. And again, I'm not going to make I'm not going to make too big a deal out of this. I'm not going to come out here in the water and really try to coax the dogs a lot. I'm just going to kind of stand out here and observe. Now, I'm not above. If you, you know, if you, if you have limited time to get out in environments like this and you need to rush it a little bit, then you know you can use a long line. You can kind of make things happen a little bit, a little bit fat, on a little bit faster pace, an accelerated pace. But if you have the time, it's always good to kind of just come out and let things work themselves out at a natural pace. Now look, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. First time being introduced to water and he's not worried about it a bit. Now Charlie, she lives on a beach, you know, so we expected her to do well. Hoban, he was born in Illinois. He's gonna live in Texas though. Good boy, Luke. Luke, you a good boy. You a very good dog. Very good.
Okay, so cameraman, if you were trying to want to stay there, next thing I want to do is I'm going to toss the retrieving item out here in the water a little bit for no name to go get, and then we'll see what what if Luke comes back over here. All right. Now look what Luke is doing over there. <laughs> and so I'm over here trying to get Luke interested in coming to the water, but Luke has found something stinky. And as much as I try to be important, as much as I try to offer fun activities, there's just really not many more fun activities than eating poop and rolling in it. <laughs> and so I'm sure that's what he's doing over there. He's eating deer poop and rolling in it, you know. But maybe, just maybe, he'll figure out that we're having a good time and he'll come back. Okay, now come back to me, cameraman. So, so Hoban, just, he just come over here, and you guys will have heard it. He just come over here and started barking at me, like in anticipation of us playing this game some more. So we're going to try it again. Oh, boy. And look, so Charlie's interested. And Hoban's interested, and Luke, he's not sure what he's going to do. Very nice. Okay, I'm going to move out in the water just a little bit farther. Oh, and here comes Luke. Very good. All these guys are seeming to get a little bit interested. Very nice. Here comes Charlie. Oh, look at Charlie. She's swimming. Nice. Oh, that's about perfect. Hoban's not 100% sure. Now, look, Charlie comes over here. You'll see this sometimes, guys, if you use this wading technique to get dogs used to water. They'll come over close to you, and they'll start, like, hugging you, putting their paws on you. Uh, don't fuss at them, okay? Because they don't understand that they came out in the water and then the water like got deep and they're not going to be able to stand up, right? So they'll come out and they'll start moving their legs, they'll swim, then they'll swim to where you are and they'll want to climb up. So when you start to see them make that circle to come back to you, just walk back over here to the bank so that they understand the concept of going from the bank to the deep water back to the bank. Again, it's a pretty, pretty natural and organic experience if you let it be. Hey, Luke. What you doing, nerd? Looky Luke. All right, see that? They're all interested now and they're all looking. So in order of preference, if you can acclimate the dogs to a new situation simply by, you know, putting them in a positive peer group, that's always our preference. And there's other ways. You can go back in my other videos and see how I do it when I'm on a compressed, you know, timeline. Very nice. Now you see this time Charlie came out and like looked at me and then she realized she could just go back to the, uh, come on here. She could just go back to the bank and get herself out of trouble. Very nice. What are you doing, Charlie? What you doing, Charlie? Come on. See if I can call Charlie out here. Perfect. Oh, she's a very good dog. She's a very good dog. Come on, Luke. Oh, don't be jumping up on me. Go back this way if you need to get back on the ground. There you go. Okay, come on, Luke. I'm gonna walk on down here a little ways. And you see him taking off after no name. There you go. If you want to, come on up here closer to me, cameraman. Very good. Very good. Dogs. Oh, what are you doing, Hoban? You're gonna have to come out here. You want to get some work in? Very nice. 
Good dogs. Oh, I don't know if you guys could see that on the video, but uh, we just had a bird, you know, uh, jump down in the pond and uh, make off with a fish. That's pretty interesting. Oh, hello, Charlie. Go that way, don't jump on me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at Luke go. Stay here, I'm gonna go up there and throw it back towards you. Come on, Charlie. Come on, no name. Oh my gosh, no name's such a good boy. He's a very good boy. Oh, hello, Charlie. Good dogs. Good dogs. Come on, come on. Oh, my gosh. All right, I think we'll get one more in, cameraman. Then we'll go get the side-by-side -side off and do a little side-by-side -side work. Ready, Luke? <laughs> Very nice. Very good dogs. All right, so all in all, we had a great session. Uh, we learned some valuable information about Luke, which is one of our primary concerns. You know, I do a lot of labs, uh, so I pretty much know what they're gonna be like to come out on a farm and adventure with. Uh, but with Luke, you know, when you start talking to people with curly coats, and there's not a lot of them, you know, but they talk about the dogs being a little bit aloof or maybe uh, a little bit anxious, you know, and I can see that in Luke. But I think, honestly, uh, if we go back to a, like, a, like a simple understanding of dealing with anxiety, uh, that we're not going to really have any long-term problems with Luke, Always remember this, guys. It's just you can't get too much early socialization. You can't get too much attention span development. And when in doubt, remember that there's an inverse relationship between exercise and anxiety or any other type of misbehavior. More exercise, less misbehavior. Less exercise, more misbehavior. And that misbehavior might manifest itself in being destructive or whining or who knows what. But unfortunately, oftentimes with kind of nervous dogs, uh, it manifests itself with, uh, you know, what most people would call aggression issues. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little socialization experiment, uh, experience. experience. Uh, and if you know something about curly coats, uh, go ahead and post it below because we're going to try to make a little bit bigger video about the breed next week. And uh, I'd like to hear your input. All right. I'll talk to you guys next week. Good dogs. Oh, my gosh. You're very good dogs. Let's go climb on this log. Very nice dogs. Very nice dogs.